We're going to be talking with tax expert Jashwin Beiju regarding uh, the South African Revenue Services investigating luxury goods purchases as part of a clampdown on individuals it suspects are deliberately hiding sources of income from the authorities. Uh, so I'm kind of wondering, is that a worrying situation or, um, you know, should we just be paying our taxes or keeping away from luxury items? I say that tongue in cheek, of course, but it is a serious uh, situation. Tax expert, a very good morning to Jashwin Beiju. Very good morning. Welcome to the program. And what do you make of that? Good morning, Julie. So basically... This is almost an extension of what is known as a lifestyle audit. Now, a lifestyle audit is typically conducted where the super wealthy or your high net worth, your ultra high net worth, or even your affluent are considered to be involved in some sort of illicit trade or fraudulent activity. And that is the means by which they've generated their wealth. What happens is the revenue service then looks into their standard of living in comparison to the revenue, annual revenue declared by the taxpayer. And if there is a correlation, then it's fine and it makes sense. But ultimately what SARS are looking for is where there's a drastic mismatch. And when I say drastic, I'm talking about someone who is grossing about 650 to 750,000 per annum but is driving around in a 5 million rand vehicle, Ooh. which they just cash. <laughs> and I mean, those those are evident red flags. I think you'll, you'll recall right. um, earlier this year, there was actually an instance where a gentleman decided to go to social media with his luxury vehicles and basically gave himself away to SARS. So the, the, the extension <laughs> of, of SARS's powers, I mean, it's, it's far reaching and it's almost like you don't see it coming. I mean, when you go to, let's say, Adidas or, or Puma or, you know, the, the golden, the, the diamond walk in Sandton City and you pick up a handbag for 20,000, take a picture, put it on social media. At no stage are you thinking, OK, so the government actually has an eye on this, whereas you are only earning, call it 15,000 rand a month. So it's it's small things like that. And I actually saw a statement that, that happened in the um, tax in Daba where they mentioned certain luxury apparel. And then your, your next point of concern is, are they basing this on information received from those shops, such as your, your Louis Vuitton and your Gucci, your Versace? I, I need to come, Jashwin, I need to come in there uh, because when I went to, into one of those stores a long time ago they take down all your details your name in fact they take a picture of your id doc document as well and i wasn't comfortable with that by the way i didn't go in there to shop i went along with someone else in case you think that i fall into that class no i don't <laughs> But I was horrified at all of the, you know, they have all of your details on record. So, yes, I agree with you. I think those luxury uh, apparel stores are handing over the information. But I'm also then wondering when, how does the Poppy Act come into play here? Is that not uh, a clash of interest then? So here's the thing. The Poppy Act speaks to protection of confidential information. And this is typically by virtue of a third party service provider or in some instances, a service provider who on sells or on uses a certain product or service that's provided. When it comes to procurement of personal information, there is what is known as the automatic exchange of information, which SARS has been using with a number of jurisdictions. And what has been proposed, some, similar to what's been used in Australia and Mauritius, etc., is what's known as an unexplained wealth order. Now, what that wealth order will do, and mind you, SARS, SARS does have the full backing of a number of government agencies here, to the extent where a memorandum of collaboration has been signed. What that will serve to do is, it is SARS's way of saying we're investigating Tom or Dick or Harry, and we require certain information pertaining to these individuals. 
that will then be presented to the organization or as we're as we're discussing now you know the the store the chain of stores and that may very well be the means by which SARS procure this information poppy is all good and well but that very much speaks to disclosure of confidential information to third parties it does speak to a first party or a standard agreement where there's it's bilateral there's no tripartite etc but when it comes to something like this and where it can be shown that there's potential prejudice to the fiscus then SARS does have certain powers to actually request this information by the way just on the side a side note here if ever you go to that diamond mine a mile in Santon City I am always amazed at the long queues I see outside of the stores, queues of these young people, you know, trying to get in to go and do their purchases. And I kind of wonder, but where do these people get all this kind of money from? But that's just by the way. Um, let's look at the issue of, you know, and I do need to make this statement as well. I don't know what your thoughts are on it. Is why SARS not uh, targeting the corrupt, government officials who have fleeced who have fleeced us the country we are honest tax paying people and you know they steal from us they lead high lifestyles how come SARS is not targeting them or is it something that's being done uh, you know quietly and we're not aware of it uh, so it's it is possible that it's it's being done more from the shadows because it must be borne in mind that lifestyle audits are not something recent. I mean, lifestyle audits have been going on since 2007, but very discreetly. And that pertains more to your, your politically um, inclined individuals. Ooh, so, okay. yeah, so, so what they're, they're called a PEP, which is a politically exposed person. And when it comes to those investigations, most cases it is done very discreetly. Um, there are repercussions such as a, a loss of authority or fines or repayments, but for the, for, the, for the taxpayers as a whole, for the broader base of taxpayers, which base is drastically shrinking, mind you, but SARS is very much targeting the high net worths and the ultra high net worths, and they're, they're actually using a threshold of net asset value exceeding 75 million now another tool that SARS has indicated they may consider is the utilization of lifestyle audits but through the form of additional or estimated assessments and that means you declare a million per annum SARS then goes and looks at your records, your bank statements, your purchases, all of your transactional history, and raise an estimated assessment based on your buying power and your transactions over the last year, as well as your asset value. The only concern there is it's been posed in such a way that they look at asset value cumulatively, whereas my professional opinion is that they should look at acquisition value for the tax year because it is possible that you've inherited a three million rand house from your late parents or you have you know you've you've received a one million rand porsche um from some com contest or the other so that that is possible so what they do need to do they need to look at acquisitions because you could have a collector's car that has appreciated and you bought it at a hundred thousand and suddenly it's valued at two million and that's that's not a fair assessment okay i just want to share this uh, paragraph with you uh, and then you can respond to it we understand that the tax body was among institutions that were systematically hollowed out during uh, zuma's nine-year rule to protect himself and his allies from scrutiny uh, with a commission finding the agency suffered a massive failure of government and integrity under former head Tom Moyani. So is this now a supposed correction being put in place to recoup monies by people who have come into money unscrupulously? 
Yes, that's that's correct. It's it's a rehabilitative measure, so to speak. And as as they've rightfully mentioned, when they say that institutions have been hollowed out, what they're referring to is a number of competent officials who, due to what was going on internally in the institution, was either forced out or left of their own volition because of the manner in which the exercise of power was being carried out in those institutions. What they're doing now is rebuilding that to a place where these institutions, and especially SARS, is once again a highly competent government institution. Okay, finally, we do need to wrap up a very quick answer. You spoke about uh, people being targeted with net assets exceeding 75 million rand. I mean, I can't even imagine what that kind of money looks like, or if you have to write it down, what it looks like. So we're talking super, super rich here. But uh, what about uh, people who earn maybe 500,000 or yes, 500,000 to a million or just over a million per annum? Um, they just go about filing normally, uh, regularly their tax assessments. They will be taxed accordingly and they have nothing to worry about as long as there's nothing else suspicion suspicious as far as their luxury items or homes, etc. is concerned. Yeah, look, so the thing is, as long as taxpayers remain compliant, whether they're earning 1 million per annum or 10 million per annum, if they're compliant, they've got nothing to worry about. If they're non-compliant, even if they're earning half a million per annum, then you do have something to worry about. Okay, Jashwin, I would love to talk to you. There's so much more to ask you, but I do know you are going to a meeting. I think you're going to be doing a presentation. So perhaps we can talk another time, but always wonderful talking with you. That was tax expert Jashwin Baiju talking to us about SARS has a strategy of targeting buyers of luxury goods in order to boost tax compliance. Once again, a big thank you to Jashwin Beiju. Thank you for being with us on the show this morning.